Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to this week's early chapter book read aloud where I read a longer early chapter book to you for those of you that like longer stories or have the patience to sit down through longer stories. This week we are reading My Furry Foster Family. This one is Rue the Rabbit. There's a whole series of My Furry Foster Family. So we're reading about Rue the Rabbit today. And this is by Debbie Machiko Florence. Rue the Rabbit. My Furry Foster Family, Rue the Rabbit by Debbie Machiko Florence. Oh, let's see what we have here. We have Dad, Mom, me, Hannah, my best friend, and Josh from Happy Tales Rescue. Oh, and Ollie. Chapter One, Waiting for Rue. The day my family got our foster pet Rue was a great day. Every pet we foster is special, but Rue was extra special. He was our first rabbit. My dog, Ollie, ran into my bedroom early that morning. Yip, yip, yip. He wagged his tail. I was still in bed. Hello, Ollie, I said with a smile. My family and I adopted Ollie from Happy Tails Rescue. Someone had found him in a parking lot with no collar and no home. Now we are his forever family. That is how we became a foster family for Happy Tails Rescue. We take care of pets until they find their forever homes. We fostered dogs, cats, and even a bearded dragon. Ollie climbed his special ramp to the top of my bed. He's a mini dachshund. His legs are short and stubby. He's not a great jumper. My dad made a ramp to help him out. Ollie licked my face and then sniffed the book in my hands. I'm reading about rabbits, I said. Fostering a rabbit isn't the same as fostering a cat or dog. I've got new things to learn. I'm glad mom brought home these books from the bookstore. I'm going to need them. Yip, 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 Ollie barked and ran out of my room. He knows when someone is at our front door before the doorbell rings. Katya, mom called. Josh is here with the bunny. Josh works for Happy Tails Rescue. She brings us foster pets. She helped us adopt Ollie. I jumped off my bed and ran to the living room. I got there just as mom opened the door. Hello, Mrs. Takano. Hey, Kata, Josh said. And yes, hello, Ollie. Ollie wagged his tail. He even squeaked a little. He remembered Josh and how nice she was. Where is he, I asked. Where's Rue? I tried to be polite, but I almost pushed mom out of the way. A carrier hung from Josh's shoulder. It looked like a big purse. Rue the rabbit was inside. Ollie stretched his neck and tried to sniff the carrier. His tail wagged faster. I think Ollie should wait in your room, Kata, Josh said. We know he would never hurt anyone, but rabbits are prey animals. Do you know what prey means? Mom asked me with a knowing smile. I nodded. Prey are animals that get hunted and eaten by predators, I said, like cats hunt mice or lions hunt zebras. Right, said Josh. Rue will naturally be afraid of Ollie. I picked up Ollie and put him in my room. I gave him his favorite tennis ball. Sorry, buddy. I'll be back for you soon, I said. I closed the door behind me. Ollie knows the routine. He knows what it's like when my family gets a new foster pet. He actually likes hanging out in my room. Mom and Joss were ready in the guest room. Joss had set up a wire gate. She shaped it into a circle to make a pen for Rue. So what is Rue's story, Joss? Mom asked. Rue was an Easter gift to a child from a friend, Joss explained. The child and her family weren't ready for a pet though. Pets can be a lot of work. You both know that, Joss winked at, at Mom and me. People need to think before adding a pet to their family. Joss placed two bowls inside Rue's pen. She filled one with water. She put a litter box inside the pen too. Is Rue litter box trained like a cat? I asked. He is, Joss said. He's a smart little rabbit. She put a big handful of hay next to the litter box. Rue should eat mostly hay, but a smaller amount of pellets, of rabbit pellets is okay, Josh continued. 
He needs fresh greens, too. I'll leave a care sheet with a list of foods you can feed him. I nodded. I just wanted to meet Rue. Joss explained. Joss always explains everything to us when we get a new foster animal. She makes sure we understand the pet's needs. I stared at the carrier, wondering what Rue looked like. I shuffled my feet. I couldn't wait to make friends with him. Chapter 2. Thump, thump. When Joss finished setting up Rue's pen, she smiled. Okay, Kata, are you ready to meet Rue? She, she asked. Mom laughed. Kata is always ready to meet a new foster pet, aren't you, honey? She said. Yep, I said. Joss put the carrier on the floor in the center of the pen. She unzipped the front flap. Mom, Joss, and I sat down behind the gate and waited, and waited, and waited some more. Finally, a furry nose poked out. Then the rest of the rabbit slowly slinked out of the carrier. He was light tan and white with floppy ears that nearly touched the floor. He's so cute, I said softly. Rue looked at me, his nose twitched. Rue is almost five months old, Joss said. He's a mini lop rabbit and won't get much bigger. He hasn't been given much attention. Kata, your job will be to get him used to being around people. I leaned forward and wiggled my fingers at Rue. Hello, I said. Rue didn't run away, but he also didn't come up to me. I felt a little sad about that. I wanted to pet him. He looked so soft. It may take time before he trusts you and other people, Joss said. He probably won't like to be picked up. Try to teach him that people aren't scary. You can use treats to get him to trust you. Joss and Mom stood up and Rue turned his head toward them. Why don't you sit with Rue, Kata, Joss said. I have a few more things to share with your mom. Okay, I said. Joss leaned down and put her hand on my shoulder. She spoke quietly. Bunnies can be picky about who they choose to love, she said. Don't be too sad if he isn't very friendly with you. The most important thing you can do is teach him that he is safe here. Then perhaps the right person will come along for him to love. After Joss and Mom left the room, I scooted closer to Rue. I know we'll be great friends, Rue, I said. Maybe not today, but it'll happen. I wiggled my fingers at him again, and yip, 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 Ali charged into the room. Oh no, how did he get out of my bedroom? Rue smacked the floor with his hind feet. Thump, thump. Ali stopped barking. He froze in his tracks. Rue smacked the floor again. Thump, thump. Joss and Mom hurried back to the guest room. Mom scooped up Ollie and took him out. Rue stopped thumping. Why was Rue stomping his feet on the floor? I asked Joss. That thumping is Rue's way of saying he doesn't feel safe, Joss said. Oh, I said, I'm really sorry, Rue. I started to worry. What if Joss didn't think I could do a good job with this foster pet? Joss smiled. I know Rue will be fine with you, Kata, she said. Keep this door closed, and I bet in no time you'll be able to let Rue run around freely. After Joss left, I sat down on a big floor pillow, away from Rue. I grabbed my special sketchbook and started drawing. I always draw pictures of our foster animals so I can remember them. I drew Rue drinking his water. I drew him chewing his hay. It was funny watching the long piece of hay slide bit by bit into his mouth crunch 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 rue didn't come over to me and i didn't try to pet him it was enough to sit together in the same room quietly we would build our trust one day at a time chapter three one day at a time ollie's wet nose nudged my cheek i tried to pull the covers over my head but my little dog was too quick he licked my face i opened one eye good morning ollie i said I giggled as he licked my nose. Okay, okay, I'll get up. I slid out of bed and headed to the kitchen. Ali followed close behind. Good morning, Kata, Dad said. He was making breakfast like he does every Sunday. Did Mom leave for her run already, I asked. Yes, she did, Dad said. You have time to feed Rue some treats if you'd like. He handed me a few stems of parsley. Thanks, I said, and hurried to Rue's room. Ali didn't follow me this time. He stayed with Dad. Whenever Dad is in the kitchen, Ollie knows he will get special treats. Good morning, Rue, I said, opening the guest room door. Look what I have for you. 
I sat down beside Rue's pen and waved the parsley at him. He didn't come over. I dropped a stem into the pen. Rue looked at me and twitched his nose. After a few seconds, he hopped slowly to his treat. He kept an eye on me and sniffed. Then, chomp, 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 he ate it right up. I pushed a second stem of parsley through the wires. This time, Rue took it right from my hand. I held on until he had e eaten most of it. When he tugged on the last short piece, I let go. He finished his snack. I was so happy he ate from my hand. Things were going well, so I reached into Rue's pen and tried to pet him, but he dashed away. Oh, Rue, didn't he know I wouldn't hurt him? I guess he just needed more time. We followed the same routine every day during Rue's first week with us. In the morning, I fed Ollie, then Rue. I made sure Rue had plenty of hay and fresh water before I left for school. When I came home afterward, Mom and I took Ollie on his walk. After I did my homework, I spent time with Rue. First, I cleaned Rue's pen. I stepped over the fence and scooped out his litter box. I refreshed his hay and refilled his water bowl. After I finished cleaning everything, I sat down inside the pen. Rue stayed as far away from me as he could. He didn't seem scared, though. He seemed like he wanted to trust me. The second week Rue was with us, I kept the same routine. But when I cleaned his pen, Rue did something different. He came over and sniffed my feet. I was so happy. I sat down inside his pen and held out a rabbit cookie treat. Come say hi to me, Rue, I said. I've got a tasty bunny treat for you. I stayed very still. Rue watched me from the other side of the pen. He blinked his brown eyes. Slowly, he hopped over to me and sniffed. Then he snatched the cookie from my hand and ran to the other side of the pen to eat it. Good job, Rue, I said. I told you we'd be great friends soon. Two days later, I offered Rue another rabbit cookie. He took it from me, but this time he didn't run away to eat. This time he stayed right in front of me. I reached out to pet him, but he dashed away. One evening, Dad decided it was time to let Rue stretch his legs outside the pen. First, we had to make the room safe for a rabbit. Dad and I cleared away all the clutter from the floor. We unplugged the lamp and the computer. We made sure electrical cords were out of reach. Rabbits love to chew. Chewing electrical cords could be very dangerous for Rue. Okay, Kata, the room should be bunny-proofed now, Dad said. I don't think Rue will get into any trouble. Good luck. I'll be, I'll be in the other room with Ollie. Yell if you need anything. Thanks, Dad, I said. Dad closed the door behind him. It was just me and Rue in the room. Hello, Rue, I said. Rue hopped over to me, lifted his nose and sniffed. I giggled. By this time, he had learned that I always had a treat. He reminded me of Ollie when Dad is in the kitchen. Rue stood up on his hind legs and placed his front paws on the side of the pen. He stretched his body so he could get closer to me. You know I have a treat, don't you, Rue? I said, you're one smart bunny. Okay, here you go. I opened my hand and showed him his special treat, a strawberry. Rue loved it. He grabbed the big juicy berry, sat down and ate it up quickly. When he was done, he looked at me and twitched his nose. We're gonna try something new today, Rue, I said. And you know what? It kind of looked like my little bunny smiled. Chapter four, a bunny's trust. I unlatched the gate to the pen and swung it open. Then I sat down on the floor with my sketchbook and favorite pencil. Rue hopped to the open gate. He sat there for a minute or so, like he was thinking about what to do next. I drew a picture of him sitting. He was used to me drawing by now. A few moments later, he stepped out of the pen. He hopped under Dad's desk and sniffed. He hopped to the bookcase and sniffed the books. He hop, hop, hopped around the room exploring. His ears flopped up and down every time he hopped. He was so cute. Rue circled around and around the room. Then he came over to my legs. I slowly reached into my pocket and pulled out a cookie treat. He perked his ears and wiggled his nose. I set the cookie on my leg. Guess what? Rue hopped up and wobble walked onto my, on my leg to get the cookie. He ate it in my lap. I put down another cookie and he ate that one too. He was really learning to trust me. I slowly reached out my hand. Please let me pet you, I thought. 
but no. Zoom! Rue zipped back into his pen, like always. I guess he still didn't think of me as a friend. Rue and I quickly got into a routine. He always took food from my hand and ate it right in front of me, but he never let me touch him. One day, Mom said, You know, Kata, Rue might never let you pet him. Some rabbits just don't like to be petted. Remember what Joss said when she brought him here? I know, I said. Rabbits make their own choices about people, Mom continued. It doesn't mean he doesn't like you. He trusts you. He takes food from you. He hops up on your legs. He even nudged your foot. Those are all good things, Kata. I knew what Mom was saying. I knew what Mom was saying was true, but I still felt sad. Another week went by. No families were interested in adopting Rue. I'm happy every time one of our foster pets finds a forever home. It isn't easy to let them go. Sometimes it's really hard, but that's why we foster, to find homeless pets the love they deserve. I wanted that for Rue. In the meantime, I gathered lots of toys for him to play with. He nudged a ball across the room. He tossed a toilet paper roll into the air. His favorite toy was a cat tunnel. He zoomed through and made it crinkle. I always laughed when he did that. Rabbits are fast. Then the day came that I had been hoping for, sort of. Dad, Mom, and I were eating dinner. Ollie was curled up beneath my chair. Guess what? Dad said through a mouthful of pizza. I had a feeling I knew what he was going to say. It felt like my heart sank into my stomach along with the pizza I'd eaten. Joss called today, Dad continued. A family might want to adopt Rue. When? I asked. They're coming over tomorrow, Mom said. Joss is coming too. That was strange. Usually, Joss talks to people who want to adopt an animal first. If they're a good fit, she'll send them to our house to meet the pet. If all goes well, the people take the pet home. Why is Joss coming? I asked. This family already has a rabbit, Dad said. They used to have two rabbits that were bonded, like best friends. The older rabbit died. Now the family is looking for a new friend for the younger bunny. Sometimes rabbits don't get along, Mom added. Joss is going to show us how to do a meet and greet with the family's rabbit. She'll make sure everything goes okay. I taught Rue a lot of things, but I didn't teach him to like other rabbits. I worried how Rue would act. Chapter 5 Love at first sight. Joss came to our house first to the next day. I was in the guest room with Rue sitting on the floor. Well, I was sitting and he was running all over the place. When Joss walked in though, he stopped. He hopped over to me and lay on his belly. His back legs stretched out behind him. It shows a lot of trust that he lies down next to you, Joss said with a wink. You've done a great job with him, Kata. I wish he would let me pet him, I said. Every time I try, he runs away. I know, Joss said, but for him to, you, to trust you is wonderful. The hope that he bonds with another family and their rabbit. You've done everything to make sure he's ready for that. Joss and I moved Rue and his, fa and his things into my bedroom. She said rabbits can get upset when other animals come into their space. Rue's space was the guest room. Hopefully, meeting in my room would make both rabbits feel more safe. Yip, yip, yip! Ollie ran full speed to the front door. The doorbell rang. Here we go, Joss said. She and I walked to the living room. Mom was holding Ollie. A smiling family stood in the doorway. Katya, this is Mr. and Mrs. Castaldo and their daughters, Novali and Willow. Joss said, Novali looked like the big sister. Willow looked closer to my age. I wondered what it would be like to have a sister. This is our rabbit, Felicia, Willow said. She pointed to the carrier her dad was holding. Let's take her to Katya's room, Joss said. Rue's waiting for us in there. Mom and Mrs. Castaldo stayed in the living room with Ollie. My room is not very big. It felt even smaller with Joss, Mr. Castaldo, Willow, Novali, Rue, Rue's pen, and me crammed inside. Mr. Castaldo set down the carrier near the pen. Novalee opened it and out came Felicia. She's so pretty, I said. Unlike Rue's ears, Felicia's went straight up. She looked like she was wearing a black mask and hat and white shirt and black pants. 
Come here, Felicia, Willow said. She tapped the floor on in front of her. Felicia hopped right to Willow, and Willow petted her. I gasped. Will she let me pet her? I asked. Sure she will, Novalee said. Felicia loves people. I tapped the floor like Willow had. I held my breath, and Felicia hopped over to me. I reached out my hand, expecting her to run away, like Rue always did. But Felicia didn't run away. I gently petted her head. She was so soft. Well, look at Rue, Joss said. He wants to see what all the fuss is about. Rue had hopped to the edge of his pen to be closer to us. He was watching Felicia. His ears and nose twitched. Felicia spotted Rue and slowly hopped over to him. Rue was still in his pen, just in case they didn't get along. We didn't want the rabbits to fight and get hurt. Felicia and Rue sniffed each other through the wires. Then Rue hopped over to his hay and started to eat. This is very good, Joss said. They act like they're not bothered by each other at all. Kata, why don't you let Rue out? Let's see what happens. I opened the gate and held out a strawberry. But before I could call Rue, Felicia hopped right up to me and snatched it from my hand. We all laughed. I guess Felicia likes strawberries too. I said. Rue saw that Felicia had eaten his treat. He hopped over and sniffed my empty hand. Luckily for Rue, I had two more strawberries. I held one in each hand. Rue ate one, and Felicia ate the other. Sweet. After their treats, Felicia took a few steps toward Rue. She put her head down on the ground right in front of him. We all waited. Joss stood ready to separate them just in case they started to fight. Felicia wants Rue to lick her fur. Joss whispered, "It'll show her that he wants to be friends. If he does, that means love at first sight." I held my breath. This was a big moment for our little rabbit. Rue wiggled his nose and started licking Felicia's head. Hooray! They're a match. Novalee said, "The meet and greet could not have gone better." Rue found his forever family and was so happy for him. He finally had people to love him and take care of him. He had a new bunny friend too. Kata, do you want to say goodbye to Rue before he leaves? Joss asked. She knew how hard it was going to be to watch Rue go. I nodded and put a cookie on my leg. Rue hopped over, climbed up, and ate his treat in my lap. Did he know this was goodbye? He had been in our fat in our house for almost a month. He felt like a part of our family. Goodbye, Rue. I said. I hope you have a long, happy life. I reached out a finger to try to pet him one last time. I expected him to run away, except he didn't. He stayed still as I petted his nose with my finger just once. Then he leaped off my lap. It was like he said goodbye to me. Now I didn't feel so sad. Joss said that rabbits choose who they love. I was glad Rue chose Felicia, and I was glad he let me say goodbye. The end. So here we have some definitions, and we have some questions. Let's think about it. What are some things that Kata does to try to gain Rue's trust? List a few big and little differences between Rue and Felicia. What are some important things to remember when caring for a rabbit? And there's some information on rabbits. Then there's information about the author and the illustrator. And you can read more books. In the Furry Foster Family series, that was Rue the Rabbit from the My Furry Foster Family series by Debbie Machico Florence, illustrated by Melanie Demmer. I hope you liked this week's version of Early Chapter Book Read Aloud, and I hope you will join me next time. Bye for now.